It's Monday, August 5th, 2024, and this is the Climate One Audio Newsletter. I'm producer Austin Colon. And I'm producer Megan Basilia. And Megan, I know you've listened to this week's episode, but for those who haven't, you'll find it titled Thirst Trap When Big Cities Run Dry. This week, we're taking a trip to Mexico, a Petra state that just elected climate scientist Claudia Scheinbaum as its next president. She's also the former mayor of Mexico City, the largest city in North America, which has been going through a major water crisis due to climate change. It's at risk of running out of water, and it has been for a long time. In fact, much of the country is coping with drought and heat waves exacerbated by climate change. But Oscar Ocampo of the Mexican Institute of Competitiveness says water, rather than climate, was a top concern in the recent election. Meanwhile, Christine Colvin, a hydrologist with WWF International, was in Cape Town, South Africa at the height of a recent mega drought. The city was approaching day zero, when it would not be able to supply water to residents. Colvin says that of all the ways climate disruption impacts our lives, the most critical may be our relationship with water. Listen to the latest episode at climateone.org or wherever you get your pods. And if you're in the Bay Area and want to join us for a live recording of Climate One, then listen up, because we have three upcoming events with some very exciting guests. The first one is August 27th at 6 p.m. at the Commonwealth Club, featuring the billionaire investor and climate organizer, Tom Steyer. He'll be in conversation with Climate One host Greg Dalton, and they'll talk about politics, money, and power. That's Tuesday, August 27th. Then, on September 16th at 6 p.m., environmental icon Jane Goodall returns to Climate One to reflect back on her life's work. She'll also talk about how we can heal our relationship with nature by better understanding ourselves. She'll be joined by Greg and Rhett Butler, founder of the nonprofit media organization Manga Bay. That's at the Sydney Goldstein Theater on Monday, September 16th. And that same week on Wednesday, we'll be joined by Justin Pearson. You may know Justin as one of the legislators who was kicked out of the Tennessee House for protesting in support of common sense gun regulation. He's also a strong advocate for climate and environmental justice. The Sierra Club recognized him as the 2023 National Changemaker of the Year. He'll talk about all that and more with Greg at the Commonwealth Club. That's Wednesday, September 18th. Tickets for all of our events can be purchased at climateone.org. And now, here's what we're reading this week. Western U.S. battered by blazing wildfires. At least 88 wildfires are burning across the western United States, led by California's Park Fire, already the fifth largest wildfire in state history. Residents and local governments fear 2024 could surpass the deadly 2020 wildfire season as the worst on record. Air quality has also become a significant issue for much of the western U.S., with Canada's record-setting Jasper wildfire further compounding the matter. While the park fire was allegedly caused by arson, the overarching cause of the increases in both frequency and duration of western wildfires is climate change. Greenhouse gas emissions lead to longer and more intense heat waves, which suck moisture from the air and create copious amounts of timber to fuel seemingly endless waves of flame. In California alone, fire has already consumed more than five times the acreage of an average year. Beyond producing emissions and directly starting wildfires accidentally and intentionally, people have further exacerbated the issue through decades of wilderness mismanagement. For millennia, indigenous communities had a symbiotic relationship with forest fires, allowing land to burn naturally every year. But when the American and Canadian governments usurped land management from Western indigenous people, strict wildfire minimization policies were put into place to protect farming and logging, allowing timber and undergrowth to build up, contributing to the massive burns we experience today. I hope our listeners are staying safe out there. Here's some other headlines we're following. From the AP, transit and environmental advocates sue New York governor over decision to halt Manhattan congestion toll. From the conversation, electric rail hands down best option for Australia to reach net zero. From Politico, a Southern California police fleet is nation's first to go all electric. From Inside Climate News, Harris grabs Green New Deal network endorsement that eluded Biden. All right, let's connect the dots. Author and whistleblower Erin Brockovich, made famous by Julia Roberts' portrayal of her contamination lawsuit against PG&E in the eponymous film, has set her sights on a new pollutant. Her and polyfluoroalkyl substances, 
or PFAS, colloquially known as forever chemicals. PFAS cause cancer, yet they have been found in more than half of the U.S. water supply. Brockovich used a recent op-ed in the New York Times to implore state and federal leaders to take stronger action to remove PFAS from our water supply and prohibit any additional uses. She has taken lessons from her most well-known anti-contamination battle when she took pg e to court to force the utility giant to clean up its toxic wastewater. Check out Climate One's 2020 episode with Brockovich to better understand what motivates this titan of environmental justice at climateone.org. And that's it for this week's Climate One audio newsletter. Thanks for listening. 